uh, I'm using my iPhone to um, do these recordings. I had a nice little camera at one time, uh, but I, it I got it wet and it, I lost it. So, uh, I, well, actually, I just tossed it. Didn't feel like fixing it or spending the money to fix it. Didn't feel like buying a new one. And you know what? My iPhone works just as good for what I want done. And uh, <laughs> there's a there's a um, a debate <laughs> about iPhone or Android. Well, I'm I'm an Apple person, which leads me to a whole nother story. <laughs> uh, you say once you go Mac, you never go back. I Windows and me just do not get along. I started out with a Windows computer, an old Windows. One of the, one of the old ones, um, coming in a little bit closer here, an old IBM, really slow, super slow computer. Now I got me, uh, uh, I've got me a Mac Pro. It's a 2012. I, I just got it. I don't buy new. You know, let somebody else go through the uh, the troubles of breaking them in or getting them figured out, get all the bugs worked out. So I got me a 2012 Mac Pro. It's a desktop. I, 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 laptops just don't do it for me. My wife's got a laptop, but then I use it every now and then. But um, yeah. So before I get on my computer story, um, just wanted to kind of show you what I'm doing. I'm starting to get down to the nitty gritty, getting this thing uh, nice and sweet and smooth. So I'm using a combination of a lot of different a lot of my different tools you saw my gouges i'm using some chisels every now and then it just depends on what's called for i've even uh got that got a lot of my, my the, the smoothness using these razor blades uh you can get them anywhere they're, they're uh, carpet blades i guess when i was installing carpets i would use these blades for scraping up old carpet off the floor and it's just whatever concrete floors i think but I, i've got a surplus of them and i use them in there they're, they're they're razor blades man you could i mean these things are sharp um i I'd, I'd rather use uh this razor blade on most occasions versus this scraper i bought this scraper at let's see if you can see the name of it can you see that stumac or do i have it upside down <laughs> Got it right set up. It says Stumac. Stumac is a is a company. Uh, well, I mean, they have a brick and mortar store, but they do have a big online presence. I, I I buy a lot of my supplies, a lot of my tools from Stumac. And uh, this is one of the scrapers I bought from Stumac. Um, I, I I use the scraper to get uh to a really fine finish and and this little round edge right here go to youtube shows you how to sharpen these things these things need to be sharp for them to work and, I, and i'll show you what i mean you know uh, in in the round parts of it i'm scraping it and if you if you can see those little wood shavings coming up that's what you want to see you want to see them fine 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 little shavings so i can get into these uh into these corners I, i've also just to show you, if, if you're here for the fiddle making portion of these videos, uh, I'm gonna I'm fixing to learn you something. I, I don't like giving away trade secrets, but I'm gonna give away this little trade secret. Um, one of the trade secrets is is using these these blades versus a scraper. Many luthiers, you know, they'll they'll use the scrapers only because they haven't learned this little trick. And I'm gonna tell you what, you see this thing. It is flexible. You can get in there, you can bend it, and you can scrape, you know. I, I mean, you know, when you try it, you, you'll you know what I'm talking about. This little baby is even thinner than what this is. It's probably half, you know, it's half the size for one thing, and it's half the thickness. So this thing is even thinner. Man, look at that. I can get in there, and I can use that, and I can get in these corners sometimes and scrape and wow it does the job so that's my little tip for the day that's my little trade secret um and and i also like using in conjunction so I, I i use all kinds of different things to scrape and uh 
you know, I, I never, when I got into acoustic guitars, building acoustic guitars, I didn't really know nothing about scraping wood. I didn't know that there was such a thing. You know, cabinet makers, these fine cabinet makers, that's what they do. They use these wood scrapers and, and, and they scrape everything. Uh, you know, get it to the right thickness, get it to the right finish. I mean, sandpaper is nice, but it can only do so much to get the really super slick finish. That's the secret. And then when you go back and put like a urethane or lacquer or whatever, wow, you know, woodworking, man. I love, I love woodworking. So I wanted to share that. Uh, my, my phone kind of spazzed out for a second. I thought I, <laughs> I rambled off for 10 minutes and realized I wasn't even recording. I hit the record button, but it wasn't recording. I am making sure it's recording now because I see it counting down as I'm or counting up, like I'm at five minutes here for this one. Again, I'm rambling on, so let me stop. I'm going to scrape some more. But look, man, compared to what it was a while ago, boy, she's really starting to look. I got I got a little bit more work to do in here, a little bit more work to do down there, but all right here, man, it's all, like, nice and slick, and it's not going to be not gonna be too much further. Uh, you know, we're going to flip it over, and we're going to start, Carving out the backside, I'll show you how that's done. But uh, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to build me a little tool that I saw online to make sure that this thing is uh, pretty much perfectly symmetrical as possible. Um, and I'll show you how that's done. All right, I'm out. Good morning, Louisiana. You remember the. Famous catchphrase, Robin Williams, you know, Robin Williams made famous in that movie, uh, Good Morning Vietnam. I'd never watched it. Uh, funny guy. But, uh, yeah, Good Morning Louisiana. Uh, anyway, here we go. Look what I've got. Man, this thing is looking really nice. Give you a better idea. Uh, I've got just a couple more things to do to make sure it's it's symmetrical. Uh, I got like a little, a little tool to make that's going to help me with that. But before I get into that, there's no reason why I don't see no reason why that I, I can't start installing my purfling. Really, it's thin strips of wood, and so what's going to happen is I'm gonna cut me a groove, uh, about four millimeters in from the edge. Cut me a little tiny groove. That you know, little single strands gonna fit in. It's mostly a little decoration. It, it makes it look nice, and so it's gonna look nice. It's gonna stand out. It's gonna really uh, stand out against the against the the dark dark brown. You can't you can't. I mean, you can almost see it now, but you you'll see when I when I get finished with it. I'll show you. So I'm gonna do all that, but I'm gonna do things a little bit differently. Um, <laughs> doing some videos uh matter of fact i even had to delete them because they were i mean i had some stories in there and, I, and i'm gonna keep the stories and i'm gonna tell them at a later date uh try not to ramble on but uh i'm, I'm gonna do the the cajun word of the day first <laughs> a lot of times you might be coming you know just for the just for the word of the day and you can skip all the other stuff and that's fine too i got some good stories to tell but Cajun word of the day is a banom. You know what banom is? <laughs> or what a banom is <laughs> or isn't? <laughs> banom might be another one of them. <laughs> might be another one of them made up words. I, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, I mean, you know, I've, I've heard it all my life, banom. It, uh, it might be a Thibodeau thing. I don't know. Anyway, uh, to give credit where credit is due, uh, again, you know, my daughter <laughs> and a friend of hers was making up this little Cajun dictionary. Just funny words and expressions and, uh, you know, just, just for fun, just for laughter. And and I've, I've even added a couple of words on there um, uh, that, that, that they had forgotten about. This, uh, words that I grew up hearing and, and, and heard. And so, yeah, so we're going we're gonna to get through, get through all of them. But yesterday I did, uh, or one of the other videos, I did Pishnik. <laughs> Have you figured out what a Pishnik is yet? Or what is Pishnik? <laughs> uh, so today is Banom. All right, let me, 
let me uh, mark out the edge of this groove and I'll probably even uh, cut the groove uh, with my little Dremel tool. I got a real, really tiny bit that's going to fit in there. Uh, I want to work on that today, get that done. And then afterwards, we're going to flip it over and we're going to start shallowing out this. And, and uh, so, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm watching videos that I've, I've been learning from. Uh, in addition to reading and looking online and all this other stuff, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, so I'm, I'm still kind of learning the process. This is a learning process for me too. Uh, but I, you know, I, I've, I've done acoustic guitars before and I've kind of done the same thing with the purfling on acoustic guitars. So it's not, you know, it's nothing that I'm not familiar with. So it's going to be relatively easy. I've got all the right tools to, to make sure it's done right. So I, I might show you a, a little bit of that. Uh, put it in, in in fast forward, you know, and get the make it Cadillac, uh, as they say, you know, Cadillac going to town. And uh, so anyway, this is uh, we're gonna we're gonna pause right here for a second. I'm gonna come up with a story later on. I'm gonna come up. I'm gonna try to come up with a an interesting story, so it's not so boring, and try not to not try not to ramble on like I'm rambling on now. Oh, and if you notice uh, in the background. I got me a new addition to my my tool shed uh here I, I i picked i saw this online uh it's a it's a it's a magnetic bar right here and you can hang all your chisels you can keep them this way you can keep them from getting i, I had them laying down in my in my toolbox but you know they'd get knocked around and get dull so i get to i can keep all my my stuff sharp because man i'm gonna tell you what you need some sharp stuff. And man, when I start carving on that walnut, that walnut is hard, way different than this. This is soft and it wants to chip out. The walnut's going to be hard. It's not going to be prone to chipping out as much, but it's going to be hard. So I'm going to have to keep my, my stuff sharp. Good thing I got my, my sharpening stones. Got a set of sharpening stones in. Uh, got myself set up. Man, I want to do this right, you know. I want to do it like the like the old masters, for the most part. Every now and then I might break out a little little block of wood and a little sand. Yeah, you know, maybe a little sanding block. You know, get in some little tight corners and just kind of you know. I mean, yeah. Hey, we in the twenty first century. You got to take advantage of. Uh, sometimes you got to take advantage of modern technology, right? Why not? You know, make it easy on yourself. But at the same time, try to stay as much as uh, as, as traditional as possible. All right, I'm rambling. Adios. No, <laughs> Spanish. Where'd that come from? You know, every now and then I catch myself living up here in Georgia for 28 years. I catch myself sounding, and no offense to the rednecks. They got their own style, you know, and I love them for it. And it's not a knock against the rednecks. But every now and then I find myself sounding like a redneck. I'm like, who is that guy? <laughs> He's supposed to be Cajun, but that sounded redneck. So I, <laughs> I catch myself sometimes. So it's funny. You know, you know, you went in Rome, right? All right, bye. <laughs>
it's better to go in one direction. If you notice, I was going this direction and I got all kind of little wiggly woggly little thing. But man, when I went this direction, nice and straight and pure. And that's what you want. All right, you live and you learn. Anyway, this is my fiddle and I'm allowed to make mistakes, but it's a learning process and I'm figuring it out, figuring out all the time how to, how to make it better. So uh, just, just bear with me. We're gonna get it right. I am kind of a perfectionist. I like things done just right. <clears throat> All right, continuing on. Wow, that was pretty tough. <laughs> uh, haven't really ever used that little, that little uh, purfling, it's called a little purfling uh, jig for, for cutting the purfling grooves. And uh, I made a couple of mistakes, nothing that's not gonna really show up or affect the, the looks. Uh, I think I did pretty good for being a rookie. And uh, yeah, I think it's gonna work out. I, I probably should have done the back plate first, <laughs> perfling. But uh, I don't have the I don't have the back plate even ready yet. I'll, yeah, I'll show you. It's still in the same condition as uh, what you may have seen it earlier. I got I got a lot of I got a lot of carving to do on it. So uh, we'll get to that one eventually. But anyway, I'm, a, I'm a, now I'm ready to start setting my setting this purfling in, glue it in, and. Uh, I'll show you how it's done. Let me get set up and I'll I'll be back. And I'm gonna find us a good story to talk to talk about. So give me a second.